Good morning, folks. Big earthquakes continuing. We look at climate, exoplanets, the eternal dark matter fail, and baby steps towards plasma universe. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com. We're running the last 48 hours of solar activity, starting from just before the upper coronal release you saw yesterday and into the calm settling this morning. Sparse coronal holes are visible as well, and the solar wind is very calm right now. Plasma speed near the low end of range and geomagnetic conditions are quiet. An aftershock in East Oceania rang in at 6.8 this morning but was pulled back to 6.4, and an equally strong rumble hit the shallows in Japan. Tsunami warnings were canceled, but on the western side of Japan they go into evacuation prep much more easily. Up next, global climate report for the month of May. It is intriguing that this month all the blue was where the monitors are most condensed, with some stations in the rest of the world covering areas hundreds of square miles, especially in South America and western Siberia. Let's go next to possible Earths in waiting. From our solar system, the star of focus is only 12.5 light years away, making it one of the closest. And at this system, there are two nearly Earth-sized planets, both orbiting in the habitable zone. What is intriguing is that they orbit very, very close to their very, very tiny sun. This might suggest that they sit in the liquid water zone of a star that just doesn't have the juice for major solar flares, which might make that an even more habitable solar system than our own. If you don't feel bad for dark matter scientists, you have no empathy. Imagine a world where you never win. You stub your toe on every corner and furniture leg. You bite your inner upper lip in the same place every chew of food. You have a bunch of friends who are as clueless as you are, and you keep accepting billions in taxpayer funding to find a unicorn. Part of your condition is that you hate Subaru Hyper Supreme Cam. It was supposed to help spot the annihilation of dark matter in galaxies and over and over it finds nada. The low surface brightness galaxies in play for that paper were supposed to be their game breaker. Whoops. Instead, Hypersuprime found something else, a low surface satellite galaxy to the Milky Way, and we have shifted straight into another major problem for large scale dark matter cosmology, as the satellite population begins to seriously defy predictions. Of course, veterans here know that it is plasma and magnetic fields at scale that sculpt and transform the cosmos, they are just hard to see. So for example, when they look at these two able clusters, all they see is this, but to find the sparse emission spectra and map the totality, you realize that indeed, there's a lot more electromagnetic interaction and plasma exchange between the populations than they initially realized. Chandra stepped in to unexpectedly bolt the action understanding on the interior of those systems, suggesting that viscosity of the plasma is far lower than models predict and that it is the small-scale magnetic field intricacies and the plasma turbulence that is dictating the behavior of that gas. That would be as opposed to gravity and kinetic friction. Last but not least, we have what will go down into the top five discoveries of the year in cosmology. The massive cold gas halos around galaxies are co-rotating with the galaxies. This is critical for a few reasons. First, it helps explain the galactic rotational dynamics, the galactic rotation problem, since the outer stars we see in the spirals really are not the outer reach of the galaxy, are they? But also, if you recall the lost light of Hubble, which suggests these halos are twice to three times as big as expected, you not only begin to crowd out the region where the dark matter halo was supposed to be, but what would you bet they find that that even further out material is co-rotating as well, which, at such distances, could only be electromagnetically controlled? Folks, looks like tomorrow we're going to have a ton of Earth and Sun stories to report. Don't miss it, and we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank you